just deposited me back into mom's care, transferring me away to a new place. I hated it, and I made no point to hide that from either of them. I hated them, too. I hated the uneven floors of that dank one-bedroom apartment. I hated that couple that lived upstairs, and I hated that ceiling. So thin, I could recognize who was who by the sounds of their thick orgasms. And I hated the mold seeping through that yellowing, peeling wallpaper in that bathroom, so my eyesight progressively worsened. Anger and frustration weakened my vision, manipulating it so the images and my eyes reflected into the back of my brain were heavy with odium and disdain. The stench of my miseries permeated the membranes of every last scrap of optimism I had left in me. So I cut open my day-to-day -day was racked with aggravating helplessness, infuriating submission, chained to a life I had never envisioned for myself. So when I picked up those scissors and splayed their legs wide, I became my only constraint. Limitations were subjective solely to me and my threshold tunnel vision. Each heave into my skin was an alleviation of restraint. Each cleave of soft tissue was like a new liberation front. Perception completely warped by the good hurt. I sat unfazed through countless self-injury awareness presentations. I watched silently, no, smugly as my classmates grimaced, repulsed by the many methods of affliction, bullet pointed on the whiteboard before them. <laughs> they could not fathom. I was sure they did not know what they were missing as far as I was concerned. I had found the perfect outlet. But nothing bad or good can last forever, so when they started to notice how I winced when they brushed up against me, suspicion reared its ugly head, and the next thing I knew, I was sitting in the car crying as Mom frantically pulled back my sleeves and choked. After that, it seemed like the only faces I knew were the patronizing ones that stared down at me, telling me to let them help me help myself. I told them to fuck themselves, help someone else. I had a good thing though, and they told me I was self-destructive, abusive, a danger to myself. And I said, isn't it better that way? Isn't it better that I take it out on me rather than those around? Isn't it better that I suffer in silence rather than burden you? Isn't it better that I contain my torment so as not to spoil and stain your cherished immaculacy? They said, no, I had to think about that one. Not once had it occurred to me that my desolation could be someone else's. Not once had I thought that the pain I carved into my skin could be worse than the pain that circumstances had given to me. Was I the greater of two evils? Doubled over, crippled with self-doubt. They hit me while I was down and took away my scissors, substituting them with self-worth. I may be bland. I may be grabbed with scars. But at least now I can see.